here in Germany, just outside of Stuttgart, for the launch of the brand new Panamera 4E Hybrid and 4SE Hybrid. And sadly, Mark will not be joining me for this video as I left him behind at the baggage claim in O'Hare. Now, what do you need to know? Let's start from an overall macro perspective and what you can expect in this video. This is a first drive. We're not gonna be putting this up on the lift and we don't have a lot of time with this car. I'm gonna do my best to focus on the high level or key information you need to know. So from a high level, this is the all new Panamera. From a visual perspective and interior perspective, it's more an evolution versus a revolution. Front and rear fascias are new. You have new interior technology, new head unit, new infotainment. You have a passenger display. It looks a little bit more modern. The main changes are the hybrid setup and of course the suspension systems. Now, what are the differences between the 4 and the 4S e-hybrids? The actual mechanical drivetrain, the electric motor, the twin turbo 2.9 liter V6 are mechanically identical. The difference is software tuning. You get 463 horsepower in the 4E hybrid. And in the 4SE hybrid, you get north of 500. The lower trim is good for zero to 60 in 3.9, where the 4S is good for zero to 60 in 3.5. The 4S also gets bigger brakes, you get 10 piston calipers on the front, more interior options as standard, and there is a substantial price delta. The base four starts at 115,000, where the 4S starts at 228. And honestly, both of those prices are fairly deceptive because the joy of Porsche is just as a luxury good should be able to be. It is fully customizable. You're just gonna be paying a pretty penny for it. So a well-equipped 4SE hybrid is pushing $160,000 and that's with massaging seats, a Burmester and all the luxury features you're looking for and a four is like 130 with reasonable options. An interior usability perspective, it hasn't grown in size versus the old Panamera, at least to my eyes. The back seats are still tight. You can either have them as two buckets or a two plus one. The wagon form factor is gone. You can only have a hatch currently. And when the Panamera was first introduced many, many moons ago, this was designed as a driver's car S-class S competitor. It has the quietness, the comfort, the overall build quality of an S-Class, but it does not have the usable space. And that is the compromise you're making with this vehicle. Now, mechanically, what's new? Let's start with the hybrid setup. This has their latest battery pack and electric motor design. So battery pack, it's now 25.9 kilowatt hours. It's good for 40, 50 miles of E-range. We've been showing like 80 kilometers or over 70 kilometers in our drive with this four. Main thing as well is it now has a 11 kilowatt charger on board, so charging speeds are much, much faster. The electric motor that lives now in the gearbox, this is a brand new eight-speed PDK design. The electric motor sits in with a new stator in the actual PDK housing. It now shares the same oil bath or loop, and that is a far more efficient setup. Apparently, it's even easier to service but more importantly, it's more efficient and it's a lighter overall design. That motor makes over 180 horsepower. It's good for a lot of around town driving and they've built in a lot of software with the GPS to activate the full e-driving modes in cities based upon where you are. And obviously you can toggle it yourself or kick on the gas powered engine. That battery pack also drives the best thing about the Panamera, and that is active ride. It is an option at this price point, and it can only be had in this generation Panamera with a hybrid drivetrain because it's using the 400 volt battery pack to basically activate or power the active ride setup. Active ride is four independent shocks of their own motors, in each one of the corners that uses essentially hydraulic fluid in an air bladder to independently modulate each corner of the vehicle. It'll raise it for easy entry and easy exit. It has helicopter mode. It is easily one of the single most impressive electromechanical systems I've felt in any car. It has active squat uh, mitigation, active dive mitigation, active body roll mitigation, and honestly, it transforms the way this car drives. The base Panameras, though, do come with the new two-valve air spring and uh, uh, damper assembly. Past that though, I think it's time for Chris and I to go take this for a quick drive on the Autobahn. Chris, we're in Germany. 
We're about to get onto an, a de-restricted part of the Autobahn. You know what that means. Sport Plus. People ask where your money's going when you're spending, in this car's case, as tested, north of $160,000. And as we're now approaching 200 kilometers an hour, seeing if this Mercedes gets over, my goal, Chris, I'm in Germany. I'm gonna hit the VMAX in this 4SE hybrid. We've already done it now in the regular non-S model. As we work our way through traffic, getting to that 180-ish mile an hour top speed, you spent three hours in this car with me already. How was the base model in the Black Forest? Uh, supremely comfortable <laughs> is pretty much the defining characteristic. The Active Ride's amazing, right? Active Ride is actually amazing. I went into it fairly skeptical, you know, not having uh, been in a, a car equipped with it before, but uh, it is really comfortable and it really works. I'm not a guy who gets car sick very often, but like I could imagine it would really help with something like that. Yeah, so all of the the side to side motions we're driving currently at well mo a moment, Chris. Sport response. <sighs> Get in there, Chris. 200 kilometers. 210. 220. 230. Yes, it is a extremely fast vehicle. And I just tapped on the brakes at 252 kilometers an hour. No brake dive, no squat. Side to side motions of this car are essentially minimalized. I mean, what the current generation Panamera 4SE, 4E hybrid, turbo with active ride now do is they combine that ride quality that you're expecting out of something like an S-Class or a 7 Series with the body control of something like an M5 or an E63. Honestly, better body control. In the past, if you bought a car like, like an executive super sedan, you were giving up one or the other. And you can argue in the prior generation Panamera going into this, you gave up a little bit of the, the suppleness of something like a 7 Series, an S-Class. Not anymore, right? And you can comfortably drive 140 miles an hour. You feel like you're doing 80? 70? I mean, you're in the car with me. Yeah. What, I mean, how do you feel? Um, when we were cruising yesterday in the standard um, 4 uh, E hybrid, whatever the model name is, um, very comfortably we sat at like 220 <laughs> for a long time. And it was fun. And it was completely comfortable. It's quiet enough to hold a casual conversation and comfortable enough and, like, and sort of controlled enough that it's not sketchy to to do at all. The drivetrain, uh, you know, on paper, I'm going to be honest, 400 and whatever horsepower and the, the, the basic 4E hybrid and 536 doesn't sound like a lot. And you realize it's paired to a V6 with a, a small battery pack and an e-motor. But out here, it feels like more than enough ample power. I mean, 0 to 16, 3.5 seconds at a top speed of north of 175 miles an hour in this S model is, I mean, you are seriously moving. We're doing 245 right now, 250. Oh, yeah, 250. And it's, I mean, no problem whatsoever. Not at all. The V6, it does not have the noise of a V8. If you want a V8, you got to get the turbo, but it's, you don't notice it most of the time, and when you do, it's ample, ample power. The hybrid system, the e-motor, and the gearbox kicks in very seamlessly. The only way you can tell it's a hybrid at all is in the brake pedal a little bit. The way they blend regen and friction braking is a bit interesting, and also how they will disconnect outside of Sport Plus mode that we're in currently. The internal combustion engine all the time, it'll put itself in basically a coast mode on the highway, so we go back into normal or hybrid mode, you get off the throttle for enough of a period of time, the, f the engine will free will basically disconnect and you're just putting along now in disconnected engine mode. Yeah. And it's it's really, really seamless. The brake pedal though, sorry, going back a thought, it's rough. there's a little bit of weirdness in the top end of the pedal. Um, it's not enough to strip confidence away. Again, you're not doing threshold braking in this, but you do notice it. 
Um, anything else you want to bring up? Uh, the brake pedal thing is sort of exacerbated in when we're driving through like the small little towns. Um, when you you kind of have to like feather the, feather the brake a little bit, you know, because people are crossing. Yeah. And people like you know, it's the roads are really narrow, so you're kind of on the brakes like little inputs like. And I don't like the brake pedal for that, but that's the one. That's honestly yeah, the only like, complaint it, I, I have. I'm really digging. The rear steer works well. The active ride is amazing. If you buy one of these cars, even though it's a seventy five hundred dollar option, you have to do it. Uh, in tighter stuff, obviously. We're just trying to show what this car is really about, which is long distance cruising. You you find yourself on a driver's road or something, you know, really entertaining to drive on. You're if you do find yourself on a tight back road, it still drives like a Porsche, which means it has excellent body control. The steering's well calibrated. You have a good idea of what the front and rear are doing. The, the the diff does a good job getting you in and out of corners. I mean, this is an incredibly competent, do everything sports sedan. The only con, and you know, we'll be honest, it is a con. It's a shitload of money. It is an absolutely ton of money. And, you know, you are, this is the 4SE hybrid, and it's probably, honestly, like 50 grand is tested more than an equivalently spec M5 or E63. So if you're going to cross shop this with one of the super sedans, no, you're paying like S class prices um, for a car that has similar performance levels of like an M5 or an E63, but you are gaining better better substantially better ride quality and obviously all the prestige you can you're associating with a, with a car like this final thoughts on the porsche panamera e-hybrid and 4se hybrid first off huge thanks to frank and calvin our porsche reps who per usual give us great technical support so what do you need to know well, the reason you buy the e-hybrid variants of this car, whether it be the Turbo, the 4, or the S, is active ride. It is one of the most impressive electromechanical suspension systems I've ever used. Its ability to hydraulically control each corner independently and essentially eliminate body lean, pitch and dive, and both provide excellent body control and tremendous ride quality is something I've never experienced before. It gives this car just incredible flexibility. You want to drive it fast on a back road? You can. You want to drive 175 miles an hour in complete comfort? You can. It is very, very impressive. The six cylinder paired with the hybrid drivetrain is also pretty good. It really is. It's very seamless. It produces oodles of power and you never notice it, which is exactly what you want in a regular drivetrain for a big executive sedan. It falls into the background. It's engaging when it needs to be. It's quick when it needs to be and it's smooth when it needs to be. So what are the cons of the car? Well, other than some of the size requirements and all that other stuff, which is totally personal preference and use case based, it's price. This is more money than a 7 Series or a S-Class, and it is way more money than an M5 or E63. Does it do luxury and sport exceptionally well and combine both? Yes, but you are paying for it. Again, for a Panamera 4SE hybrid, by the time you have one well-equipped, it's 160,000-ish dollars and historically these don't have the best residual values, which means your cost to own is gonna be high. But if you're one of those people where money is no object and you're willing to spend that kind of money and it's not a problem, I can assure you, this is one of the most impressive luxury sedans you're ever gonna drive. So that, thanks for watching, hope to see you soon.